I'm a suburban Texas dad raised in the North who writes novels. I was a teacher for many years. I am the author of uh, now four novels. My first two were uh, The Summer Guest and Marion O'Neill, um, which I'm very proud of, but the one everybody seems to know about is The Passage, which was the first book in a trilogy. We are calling it The Passage Trilogy. The second book is called Twelve, and the third should come out in another two years. It's kind of the big canvas project of my life, sort of the grand opera. And I'm obeying the orders of my daughter, who asked me to write it when she was nine years old, which is to write a story about a girl who saves the world. And that is, that's the project. I would meet her at the end of her school day dressed in my running clothes and um, bring with her bicycle. We lived just a couple blocks from, from her elementary school. And uh, we'd spend an hour together and uh, I was really just trying to improve her bicycle riding skills, which were a little on the sketchy side. And uh, to sort of pass the time in, in the Texas heat, we, we played a game called Let's, Let's Plan a Novel. And it was just for fun. And, but eventually it became you know, such a good story that I actually, I was writing something else that was sort of gasping for breath. And <laughs> so I put that aside and, and took this up and um, decided to write it. I mean, it's sort of like, and just one, one day I said, you know, you don't, this stuff you don't get very often. This is great material, it's a huge story. Um, I, I think it would be a gas to write. So I did. The women are the main characters. It's very much about the women in this book. I was taking different aspects of sort of traditional female power and strength and dispersing them amongst the characters. So Amy, Amy kind of has like the, she has the mystical strength that women possess, the intuitive strength. And Alicia has the kind of physical warrior strength, which, you know, any man who's watched a woman have a baby knows about. And there are two others who I cannot name who embody sort of maternal strength, and then it's, uh, sensual strength. So gradually, it, it, the women have emerged as the, as the, as the primary actors. As a writer, you're thinking, okay, how would somebody with these particular characteristics, including the fact that they are female, how would they, you know, how would they feel in that moment? What would they do? And what's on their mind when they do something? And so you have to be you know, really alert, and you can't just kind of slip into you know, sort of the easy assumptions and it, it actually makes your writing go up a level, you know, just at the level of writing. I also feel it actually enriches your humanity, so it's a really good exercise. And, it's, and, and that's also for readers too, you know, like when you read a novel in which, when, as a man, I read a novel that is from a woman's point of view, or some of it is from a woman's point of view, and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, a, it's kind of a, an education, you know, and one we could all stand to have. The first book, the main group of characters have been living in a state of almost completely hermetic isolation. They really don't know what the past is even. They're the descendants of children who escaped from Philadelphia into a, a FEMA-created compound, and then with the idea that they would take temporary refuge there, but then of course the world, you know, the, you know, the, the world was, over, was, well, was overwhelmed. The war was lost. And so they've lived in a state of complete isolation with only sort of local reference points for things, you know, in terms of their, how they organize themselves, how, what kind of family structures they have, what kind of government they have, how do they view material objects. In the second book, the major setting of that book is a world that is, is a community that actually has a very strong connection to the past. So in this place, history has actually flowed in a continuum. So my characters were, and this was sort of a relief to me because it, I, I, could, I could indeed make a few more assumptions about things. They are a little more like you and me, in a sense. You know, um, they still have massive constraints on their lives because it's such a dangerous place. They're down to just, you know, like just under 100 uh, people, and people are not getting married, and they're not having children, and um, the whole thing's beginning to have an atmosphere of futility, and their technology is collapsing. Whereas in this one, they have, in a sense, an indefinite source of power. They have. The, all the crude oil in one of the uh, salt domes of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which is where we keep massive amounts of crude oil in these natural domes and some on the Texas coast and one in Louisiana. And so they have access to this resource. And so the people who live there not just view themselves as connected to the past, but they are part of a continuum that could indeed move, move into the future. Right, so they they built a more complex society. They have money. One of the decisions I made was was um, to not pretend, as many writers do, that they're writing a brand new story. Right. I mean, it's pretty. We've pretty much worked out every story. 
you know. Right. So you're always operating in not just within tradition, say, of genre, but actually of you know sort of archetypes of characters and plots and circumstances. And so you know that requires you actually to to you know I think you should acknowledge that material and then of course try to do something you know new with it you know to bring a new sensibility to it that is yours in particular and seems connected say to your cultural moment right um but the other thing it does is it invites you or at least it invites me to be a complete book nerd in a sense while i'm writing a novel i mean the passage was full and the 12 is full of references some of them you know oblique and and subterranean and some of them just like way out sitting there on the page mm -hmm. right to lots of different works of literature of quite a range. The passage had a lot to do with King Lear, even as it was, I thought, a thoroughly contemporary novel meant to be read by a general audience with a very strong plot, but it did owe quite a debt to King Lear, which I saw in high school, and I realized that it was a play about the end of the world. It was an apocalyptic play. Every meaningful human bond and institution is destroyed in five acts. Right. It's the end of the world, right? And. That has stayed with me because I also, you know, I grew up reading books like Alas, Babylon and Earth to Bots and all the sort of Cold War classics that expressed our, you know, general anxiety about our ability to destroy ourselves. And I found in Lear, you know, the same investigation. So you'll find all kinds of things. You'll find, you know, you'll find references to, the, to you know, Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, which I love. But you'll see Shakespeare and in this one, you know, Emily Dickinson and Dickens um, and all these writers that were part of my education as a novelist. As a teacher, I can say it's really nice to get a thank you note from a former student. And so the book is, as the passage was as well, full of thank you notes.